what does the foreign exchange market look like in equilibrium okay here you have the quantity traded here you have your exchange rate okay here you have the demand for the Australian dollar for example here you have the supply of the Australian dollar right so here you just say I don't know Australian dollar per let's say US dollar can be any currency can be Indonesian rupiah whatever doesn't matter and we say that in equilibrium you get Q0 Australian dollars traded at the exchange rate of E0. So I'm going to give it a number. $3. And I will change that Q0 to 100. Okay. So this is just the in, an initial situation. This is equilibrium. What I want to do is to test your knowledge of what happens when demand or supply changes. Or in my example, I'm going to change both. Okay, so I'm going to pose two questions to you. The first question I'm going to pose to you is I'm going to say there's been an increase in foreign investment in Australia. Increase of foreign investment in Australia. And secondly, I'm going to say that there is a fall of Australian investment overseas. Okay. So what you need to figure out is what is changing in terms of the Australian dollar, right? This is the graph for the Australian dollar, demand for Australian dollar, supply for Australian dollar. First situation, there's an increase in foreign investment in Australia. If there's an increase of foreign investment in Australia, there should be an increase in the demand for the Australian dollar. Right? If you are from Singapore and you decide to buy an Australian factory, when you pay the owner of the Australian factory to buy over that factory, you have to pay them in Australian dollars. So you have to take your Singaporean dollar and you have to sell it and increase and buy the Australian dollar. That is an increase in the demand for the Australian dollar. So there's an increase in demand. Then what about the situation of Australian investors investing less overseas? Normally, if you're an Australian investor and you want to buy a factory in Vietnam, you would have to sell Australian dollars in the foreign exchange market in order to buy the Vietnamese dong. So you would increase the supply of Australian dollars in the foreign exchange market. In this case, you're investing less overseas. So what you normally sell, the amount of Australian dollar you normally sell, you're going to decrease. So in this situation, there is going to be a fall in the supply of Australian dollars. Okay, What we're going to do is we're going to reflect that in the graph. So I will move this. Let's put this over here. First, there's going to be an increase in, in demand. So we just, you know, show that there's an increase in demand. D1. And then a fall in supply. S1. Right? So we had our old equilibrium over here. Now we have our new equilibrium over here. Okay. So what you're going to see is that there is going to be an appreciation of the Australian dollar. Let's say it goes from 3 to 4 units. The Australian dollar appreciates. Right? This should not be a surprise. You go back to lecture number two. If you increase your demand of something and you reduce the supply of it, so more people want to buy less of or want to buy something that is less available, the price of it must go up. The change in the quantity depends on whether the demand curve changes by more than the supply curve. In my situation, the way I drew it, no change. No change in the quantity traded. Right? It depends. If you had drawn the change in demand over here, then you would have had an increase in the quantity demanded. If on the other hand, you had the supply decrease just over here, then yeah, you, would, you would have had a similar situation. So it depends on, on how it was drawn, right? What, what is important is that you understand that the currency goes up 
what happens over here is not so important. It depends on how you drew your change. So that, that's, not, that's not very important. You just report what happened. But what is important to show is that the currency uh, became stronger. The currency appreciated. Okay, so that's, that's basically part one of, of the situation. But now we ask another question. We ask the question, what happens if the government intervenes in the market? Right? And this often happens in the foreign exchange market. You get the RBA coming in. The RBA wants, does not want the above situation to occur. Does not want the above situation to occur. What occurred? The currency appreciated. That's what occurred. It went from 3 to 4. The currency appreciated. It doesn't want the above situation to occur. It wants the AUD to go back to where it was. Okay. So what happens now is we say is the authorities, in this case the Reserve Bank of Australia, is going to intervene in the market, right? So what it's going to do, it's going to peg the currency. It's going to fix it in such a way that the currency will be fixed at 3 or pegged at 3. So essentially what, what the government is trying to do is they say we want to fix the currency here. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we are going to look only at the new demand and supply curve. Okay, so we're going to ignore the old ones. Right? We're going to ignore the old demand and supply curves. Right. So let me see if I can... Is it possible to erase this thing? It's not. Okay, never mind. So we're going to be looking at S1 and D1. The thing is, if you're going to fix the currency at 3, you are not in equilibrium. You are not in equilibrium because the quantity supplied is QS. But the quantity demanded is QD. So you have a situation where quantity demanded is greater than quantity supply. You are not in equilibrium. This should not surprise you because we are lowering the price of the Australian dollar. So when the price is low, quantity supplied is small and quantity demanded is high. We are going to have a situation of what we call excess demand. Quantity supply is less than quantity demanded. We are going to have excess demand. So the job of the Reserve Bank of Australia is to get rid of this excess demand without causing the currency to change. It wants to fix it at 3. So how can it do that? Well, if demand is too high and you don't want to change the demand, what you have to do, you have to increase the supply you will have to try to increase the supply of the Australian dollar. So you're going to want to increase the supply of the Australian dollar from S1 all the way down, all the way down that it will touch over here. So essentially, you want to increase the supply of the Australian dollar so the currency will go back from 4 to 3 and this will be a situation where quantity demanded equals quantity supplied. So there is going to be a fall in the Australian dollar back to where the government wants it to be and there is in my example going to be an increase in the quantity demanded and quantity supplied.
right? So this is quite a common situation. Governments constantly interfere in the foreign exchange market.